And we're live. We're live. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It is So Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics. And we are here in Oregon this week. So last week we were up in Snohomish, Washington at Quilting Mayhem, which if you are a Pacific Northwest person and you have not visited Quilting Mayhem, you really have to go up there. We had a ball last week. We did the toaster sweater. It was super fun. We did some classes. It's great. Um, but this week, we drove down to Oregon, which is my home territory. And we are here this week with Sam Hunter from Hunter's Design Studio. So come on over, Sam. So we'll introduce you to Sam. Want to get, to, like, <laughs> this is my buddy Sam. <laughs> so we want to make sure that you guys know that if you share the video, at the end of it, we will give away a beginner box kit for both YouTube and for Facebook. So make sure that you share the video. Okay, it's a great little kit. It has three one-yard cuts with some pins, some needles, and or ne yeah, pins, needles, I think, and thread. And so you'll be able to get started right away. It's fabulous. So make sure you share it. You want to be able to share with your quilting groups, too, because we're going to talk about quilt patterns. Oh, okay? yeah. <laughs> and how to make them work with cuddle, too. And not just make them all out of cuddle, but kind of mix the substrates together. And it's going to be super fun. So thanks for being here, Sam. I appreciate it. Thanks I'm for letting us be here. <laughs> I'm excited because I haven't worked with cuddle in this kind of way. So right. So I get to be the guinea pig today. Yeah. So this will be super fun because Sam is really good at designing things. And I'm pretty good at sewing things. So yeah. we're going to work together and be able to show you all sorts of stuff. What do we got happening, Hawk? We're good. Okay. No, Your really face good. was... Looking like you were going to say something. I was worried. I was worried something went wrong already. No. Everything's good. Yeah. So anyway, so Sam and I have known each other. We, I don't know if yeah, we figured it out. It's a decade or so. At least it's a, a decade. It's a long, strange decade. At least it a really decade. has been. So <laughs> we met <laughs> through the local quilt guild here. We both taught locally. I've used her patterns. And um, we've worked together on a few different things. We kind of wanted yeah. to share some of that. So how long have you been do designing quilt patterns then? 12 years. 12 years. And your company is called? Hunters with an S. I'm sorry, guys. It's in the URL. It's a pain <laughs> in the butt. I know. I won't ever do it again. Hunter S. Designs studio hunters design studio so and they can find you um on the internet very easily yep. hunters design studio.com and if that is too much of a mouthful to remember sam hunter quilt in the googles will get you there got it okay good good so sam and i have worked together on a bunch of different projects and if you have seen me at if you were with me at quilt festival at all i was wearing the jacket so can we show the jacket the real jacket. quick because i want to talk oh, about this the so, jacket. Here. so this is the jacket <laughs> so sam and i worked over the summer to um make was it the summer that i was here that we made this jacket i think has it really been that long already i think so so we made yeah. this one which is one of her patterns which pattern is this? yeah this is 14 hugs and kisses it's actually one of each of the quilts in that pattern that is a pattern that has uh, two variations that you can make or mm -hmm. mix and match. Got it. And, and uh, it was a quilt, a finished quilt, and it we was, cut it up. Yeah, we cut it up. We made it fit you perfectly. Yes. <laughs> uh, Teresa is the queen of alterations. <laughs> she is the person that knows how to make something that it doesn't, doesn't quite fit actually look like it was made for you because at this but point it actually it. was. <laughs> yeah, it was. It totally was. So this one is her wild friends pattern, which we've got. I've worn it at a bunch of different shows and people talk about it. So this one. You see if I can turn this guy so you can see the back of it. Super cool. So it's this beautiful quilt that was made out of ombre fabric, yeah. cotton fabric. And neither of these are lined with cuddle, but that's my next task is I'm going to make a quilt that is backed with cuddle, then cut it up and make a coat out of it because I think it will be even better. So I'm really excited about it. So she has done quilting patterns for a long time, and I've made some of them. I gave one to my mom. She recently quilted it finally. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so she's been doing this for a while, and she recently came out with these new patterns that are smaller and are applique and i really do love them so today we're going to talk a little bit about that mm -hmm. um so we did this one a couple of years ago we did the noel one which is, is a sew one but she did the noel and that was um or noel no Noel the gnome. Noel the gnome. Good Noel <laughs> the gnome. Yeah, I I am a big word wordplay geek. Mm -hmm. I, I love wordplay. I I like using words in funny ways. I love getting words onto my quilts. And uh, it, one of those ideas that just sort of popped out of the ether, it's like, oh, if I take Noel and put a G on it, then that's Gnome, but that's like Gnome. Right. And then I could do a gnome with that. So I did Noel. It was a great pattern. A year later, I came back and added Boo to it. We've got Boo over okay. here on the wall. Uh, because one. why not have a Halloween gnome? Do you want me to take it down? And then no, after Boo, okay. 
it kind of exploded into a complete seasonal catalog. Got it. Got so, it. So, so the Noel came out and we did that one. So we did that. We showed it on a, yeah. uh, so together Tuesday in December of 2020. I was gonna say it's two years ago. It's yeah. been two years. So these came out just over the last. Six yeah. Months. So yeah. Um, Boo would have come out at the end, you know, Halloween time of 21. Um, and then <laughs> um, I started finishing off the seasons and got through them sort of uh, early this year, right got before it. summer. Got it. So when so when they were designed, Sam made them for cotton. So come Absolutely. back. So come back over here really quick, Hawk, and let's show let's show we'll these show really these. close because yeah. I want to compare the two. Yeah. So this is the original one that Sam made for the pattern. So you can see it's all just done with cotton applique. So these are cotton pieces. Mm -hmm. And then these samples were done. All of the cuddle samples, samples were made by Naomi, Naomi Stewart, who is our brand ambassador up in Montana. Rock star. And she is a rock, rock star. star. <laughs> she made these and they are so great. So we're going to talk about how you can incorporate all of these different kinds of fabrics and notions and everything into here. The so one is my favorite. It's got all sorts of fun so stuff that we'll talk about. Yeah. But there oh, were and Naomi a, rocks so she, oh, she embellished the heck out of it. She yeah. had a party with the embellishments. <laughs> she did. They are really it was great. Just, so yeah. So what we want to talk about is how we're gonna do it and um basically the differences between the two. So the Noel Noel is where it started. No, they where just kind of went, yeah. went from there. We were talking about so you really like words and you so you did a book that was all about words. Too, I did. Right? It was called Quilt Talk. Quilt Talk. Um, and so I used it to make some of the placemats mm -hmm. and there's some fun things. Yeah. So it has its own alphabet in it. Yeah. Which I think is super cool. And one of the cool things is that you have it on your arm. Oh yeah. yeah. And we kind right of here. have so we have so we both have make <laughs> tattoos. Yeah. Yeah. So we are the make girls is what it is. But I think it's super fun. So hers came first, but I didn't steal the idea. No, not at all. I and, might have, uh, you know, just been inspired. Yeah. Um, <laughs> here's the thing, guys. Everybody owns their art differently. It's okay. It's okay to have your version of it. Yes. I don't feel the least bit, uh, <laughs> I don't know, stingy about sharing the word make with my Good. friend. We're both makers. We're both makers. Yeah. And yeah. you're just making your alphabet I'm making and I'm making my mine. Alphabet, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we're going to talk about. Okay, so let's show the make or the um the sew. So, mm -hmm. so this is the pattern we just for come it. Up with a new, a new banner. We might have what <laughs> new banner? A make. A make. A make. <laughs> so a make this help. is the sew one. So come on in and show. So this is what it looks like. Tall. Let's see if we can. Let me get back so you can yeah. see yeah, the whole they're thing. About uh, seven inches across. Mm -hmm. By about 36 inches, I think it's 36 inches this way. Yeah, it was 36 so and a have, half that yeah, I had to cut it. 36 and a half. So, <laughs> I mean, get this out of a quarter yard. Yes. So that was the intention. Right. I was trying to keep it in those easy cuts for you to have in your stash. And especially whenever we're doing this as pattern designers, we're really trying to take care of our store partners. Mm -hmm. um, so our store partners do amazing jobs at kitting. And when they kit, it's easier for them to use standard cuts. So yes. that was the whole intention of this. Got it. It's to make this extraordinarily kittable for our store partners. Great. And it's really, it's super easy because this, if you buy that quarter yard, you get the backing and the you can get the front. They're both quarter yard pieces. Yeah. And this is actually super great for scrap busting too. Totally. So we'll share a little bit more about that and how you Check can kind of use it. Out. Check the scissors oh, out. Check the scissors out. Naomi did great. Yeah, no, Naomi's attention to detail. And this is a really cool thing. I'm kind of a just the facts ma'am person mm -hmm. when I start putting things together. So I don't think about all of these levels of embellishment. And, and to be honest with you, I don't keep this stuff in my studio. Right. But if you are an embellisher, there are so many opportunities for you to take this art and make it your art. Yes. And that's the part that I love about pattern design is where I can, I can give you the starting point and mm -hmm. then we can launch you in the in the your magic exactly and that's what we want to do so you saw the little cork pieces there it's mm -hmm. super fun thread. super I, they're wrapped yeah. actually in thread in so thread. let me show you what it looks like with the um the cotton so this with is why the we just the facts ma'am version right and this is what we <laughs> wanted to show you guys because the pattern is really cute by itself and then you start adding to it you add your own personality your own yeah. style to it yeah. and all of a sudden it becomes something super cool so this is the so just look at the difference between like it's so much one that this just called out for yeah we have to do this in cuddle so when i saw yeah. it i was like yeah I mean, we have to these, do it both these options are super cute they're super yeah. cute i like tugging on the beer i love his little beer i just it's just such a different look and that's the kind of cool yeah. thing about it is there's all sorts of things that you can do with cuddle and cotton together so yeah this one has a cuddle 
um, cuddle pieces here. The backing is cotton. Or the background is cotton. The backing is cotton and the binding is cotton. And then there's, she actually used um, the cork. She used the, uh, what do you call this stuff? Do you remember? Oh, vinyl. Vinyl. Is it might be a vinyl, cuttable vinyl. There is a vinyl. Holographic vinyl. Holographic vinyl. I think it's Kimberbell product. Um, and then this is actually like floss. So she mm -hmm. really mixed and matched things up. This is a cotton on top of the cuddle. Mm-hmm. Like all sorts of things that you can do. Mm -hmm. So what we kind of want to do today is inspire your creativity. But we're also going to show you how to make yeah. part of this. Okay. So there are kits available from Montevilla Sewing. And um, she has them. They're all cotton except for the beard. So that way you have everything. And the beard is cuddle. So um, you have everything that you can make it. But what I would encourage you to do is see what you could swap out with your little scraps. Yeah. See what you can do. Yeah. And there are a ton of them. Naomi's in the comments. She says, Hi, vinyl, not Kimberbell. Okay. Vinyl. Got it. Thank Naomi, you. Appreciate you're it. a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. So we have more that we're going to show you, but we're going to talk through the pattern first, and then I'll show you more. There's a ton of them. We don't know how many. A dozen-ish. It's a dozen-ish. It's a dozen-ish. There are more in my head. <laughs> so they'll come. Maybe it's a make dangerous one. neighborhood up here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is the pattern. So we can show you the pattern. The pattern comes like this with... The uh, and this will come. You can get the pattern directly from you. Yep, we correct? sell a PDF download from my website, and if you go to one of our stores that is a stockist, you'll get the paper pattern. Mm -hmm. And if your store is not a stockist, just let them know. I'm happy to help them out there. Yep, yep, exactly. If, you, if you're not keen on buying a PDF, just go to your local quilt store. They would love for you to tell them what you want. Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah. I say this all the yeah. time. Tell them what you want. Tell them what you so want. So in the pattern you get, this is obviously the picture of what it's going to look like. And then you get tips on how to put it together, all this good stuff. And then you get the sheets that are actual size mm -hmm. for what the um, pattern is. So when I opened this up to put my little, mm -hmm. to start it, I was like, wait, they're, wait. <laughs> they're back to back. So how do I do this? Exactly. Now, the reason why they're printed back to back is this forces you to make copies for you to use. And the reason for that is so that you don't cut up your master pattern, draw on your master pattern, cut into your master pattern, right? and then lose your master pattern for the next time you might want to use the pattern. Yes. So um, if you have the PDF, you print these pages uh, single-sided. Single-sided. Mm -hmm. If you have this, you take it to your lovely home copier. I know we all have one. Um, <laughs> and you print single-sided again. Just make sure you don't reduce. Right. Make so sure you print at print 100%, 100 or copy at 100%. And here's the thing. If you happen to accidentally reduce, mm -hmm. the whole thing will be reduced. Right. It's right. fine. Yeah. It's all, it will be reduced all in scale. It, We're not actually fitting pieces together. So it's not like you're going to, uh, you know, cut a quarter inch off the wrong thing. Right. Okay? Right. It just ends up being yeah. slightly smaller. Yeah. Yes. So that's the reason why it's made this way. I know it's one step more for you guys. I know it can be a pain <laughs> in the patootie. But what I really am trying to do is protect your investment by protecting your first pattern. Right. And then it makes you keep it, which I think yeah. is great. So so I took mine. So I did. I had both versions. So yeah. I have the PDF and I have the hard copy. And so what I did was I printed it out, mm -hmm. single-sided, like she said, and then yeah. I taped it, together taped it together with the tape that I have. So it ends mm -hmm. up being, I'm going to lay it across the front here, a full-size pattern. Exactly. Which yeah. is... Life size. Right, which is great because then you just get to actually put it together this size. Yeah. So I don't cut out any of these oh, no. shapes, right? No. Okay. So this is fussy. used. <laughs> yes. So this is used to create the patterns that we then cut out yeah. of the fabric and stick mm -hmm. to the background. So I started it yesterday and I'm gonna show you where I'm at. Okay. So come on oh, in nice. over here, huh? You want... Okay. We're okay here. So this is where it started. So I made mine a little bit wider. So in the kit it comes at nine inches. Um, cause she gives you a yard of fab or a okay. quarter yard of fabric okay. in the kit from Montevilla. So that's what I use. That's what these fabrics are. So I got that and I just basted it together as is. So eventually I need to cut it down, but I'm going to put it together like this okay. so that I could then cut it down so that I center it. Right. Okay. So I backed it with cuddle mm -hmm. and the front is the cotton that's in the kit. And then I used a batting that I had mm -hmm. in the studio for in between. And all I did is spray baste it down for now. And then I went around and zigzagged the edges. So that was the first thing that I did to get it started was with that nine inch by 36 and a half mm -hmm. inch, I think is what it is. You chop off a little bit of the end of the quarter yard, 
base them together. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I noticed, and we're going to talk about this throughout, is what's the difference between the cotton version and the cuddle yeah. version, is that the cuddle version, I just basted these together. But when you put it together with just cotton, what do you do? With just cotton, I make it like a classic quilt. I make a quilt top, and then I layer it. And then I quilt it, and I'm going to say that with an asterisk because then I pay to have it quilted. <laughs> um, and then I bind it. Okay. So right. with cuddle, we're doing a lot more with spray based. Yes. Um, and then bringing it together at the end using the uh, edge stitching and whatnot to be part of the holding everything together. Exactly. And so this one, Naomi did the same thing that I did. She quilted that she quilted the back, but she quilted the backing first and then put the appliques on. Yes. With the cotton, you'll notice that Went the appliques are put on and then it's quilted. Okay. okay. And that holds the these pieces down because I noticed these aren't stitched around the raw edge either. And you can. This is mm -hmm. an option. Um, and again, I'm a just the facts ma'am kind of a person. <laughs> so I use uh, the warm company Steam Seam as my fusible webbing in all of these. And it's got a really good grip on it. This is also a wall hanging, so it's not going to get stressed. Right. It's probably never going to get washed. Um, so stabilizing this edge with additional stitch is not a necessary step. Uh -huh. um, and I prefer that cleaner edge mm -hmm. aesthetically. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, then you add stitching. Right, right. It totally is. Yeah. It's something that you get to make the choices about. Yeah. So I think that's what's great about these projects. Yeah, it's really definitely. why I wanted to show them is because there's yeah. so much flexibility in mm -hmm. what you do. And it's really about what you want to do with them. So yeah. I really like this. And I'm glad that she was able to quilt hers. I didn't have time to quilted or have mine quilted so right. um okay so last night I started like I said and I got the little tomato done ah, that was so and cool. I did I did a little stitching here and I tried to get it to show but I think mm -hmm. I'm going to go over this with um like embroidery floss or something so I can yeah. see it a little bit better because yeah, it's just a little bit sunk in even though I used water soluble you could still see the lines which is great yeah. but I do kind of like the the green lines on it yeah um and so the then thing oh, to ahead. point out here is in the pattern this is actually a separate piece of right. fused on stuff. So in this particular case, the way Teresa's technique worked, she eliminated those pieces. Right. And we get to make those choices all the way through. Yes, exactly. And like the same with the spools. The spool, yeah. She used floss here instead yeah, of two and pieces. And an, uh, uh, eliminated this like highlight line that I use just to like bring a little dimension into it. Exactly. She took that off and she put the actual thread on it. Right. So we don't need that line. Which is super fun. Yeah. Naomi yeah. says, I layered the top and the batting, then quilted, mm -hmm. then appliqued, yep. and then added the backing. Yep. Oh, okay. So she okay. added the backing because afterward. The, oh, interesting. Last. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, see, all the ways you yeah. can do it. And we have so, <laughs> much, is no we have so right much latitude on a wall hanging. Yes. Because it's yeah. not going to take wear, tear, and stress and stress. Right, right, right. exactly. So um, so we're going to walk through the next couple pieces. We've got the pin cushion down here. You'll notice that I did try to get the nap to go the right way. Oh, I like that. Okay. And then the feet are cuddle as well, mm -hmm. and the body is the cotton. So in the kit, you get, let me see if I can pull this out. So oh, I wow. used this. This makes such a nice kit. Oh, it's such a nice kit. It's lovely. This is for the binding, which I can use cuddle or I can use that. It comes with the um, the double-sided fusible like you mm -hmm. use. Mm -hmm. So you iron it on, pull it off, iron it back on. And that's what I did with this. Mm -hmm. And then this is the SF-101. Mm -hmm. And then you have all of these different little fabric bits. Let's see if I can flip that over. Oh, wow. Look what a nice job she yeah, did. really nice. Okay, so I took a piece out of here. And there's That's what this was. And also a beard piece that goes in there too, right? Yes, and yeah. that is this piece. Oh, here. that there. is a fun beard. Okay, so that's what we're going to use for the beard. Sherpa. All right, so next we're going to do the beard and we're going to do the hat. And we're going to do the hat out of cuddle and the beard out of cuddle. So let's leave those here. But if you're doing it with just the cuddle, so all of these you can swip swap around however you want to. Mm -hmm. She tells you what they're for in mm -hmm. the design. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, but you got all this stuff in here to deal with. Super fun. Okay. So just so you know Jen, what you get Jennifer, in the pattern. The kit is available at Montavilla. Sewing.com. Yep. And if you go under patterns, you'll be able, or I mean fabric, you'll be able to find it. Yeah. Okay. So, oops, that one I'm going to put aside too. So we're going to work on the beard and the hat is what we're going to do. Okay. And then we would have to do the nose after that, but we that can come down later. Yeah, well, today. the nose is the last piece in that series anyway. It's, right. it's on top of all those things. It's perfect. So, so we'll start with that one. So we're going to do it the Teresa way. 
Okay. <laughs> and we're going to get this ready. So the first thing we need to do is to trace out the pattern. And we talked about this a little bit. Whoopsie. Um, on tracing it out and which way. So right now, mm -hmm. you can go ahead and turn it on. Yeah. Uh, right now, it's it's right side up. What's this that? is what it looks like when it's yeah. done. Okay. Okay. That's <laughs> we'll talk about it in just a second, Hawk. Hold on. <laughs> so the pattern is right side up. It's how I want it finished. Yeah. If I am putting SF101 on the back and then fusing it down, yeah. I need to do it backwards, we right? We do it backwards. And the reason for that is we, SF101 has a, a, a side that feels like fabric. And a side that feels a little bit gritty, like somebody put salt or sugar all over it. Right. Okay. And you don't want to actually draw on the gritty side, but the gritty side is the one that is going to fuse up. So if you think about this is the right side up. And if we had this going, it's going to fuse up that way. Right. Because I'm holding the gritty side. Then we do that. Mm -hmm. Whoops. <laughs> yep. To draw out the pattern. Right. And I find it really helpful to actually manhandle the materials while I'm thinking about these things. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, this is going to go here and this is going to go right. and then right. we do that. Because it's the physics of which order does it go in. Yeah. So if you're using the SF-101, so if you're doing it with Cuddle, you have to do it this way. I think it's pretty much going to work the same way as long as you draw on the not sticky, not glue side yes. of the um, the double Oh, the double sided is fusible on both sides. You it is on fusible on the other side, but you still want to draw it backwards because again, the first fuse that goes on is onto the back of the fabric. Got it. Okay. So you still want to reverse it on this. Okay. Um, and the pattern does say that, mm -hmm. um, and I can lead you to the words and I can't make you read them. So <laughs> please make sure you read all my words. I know it looks wordy. <laughs> I know everything is too TLDR, but just do this. Yeah. Brew a cuppa, sit down, read the words. <laughs> read the words. And then it all makes a lot of sense. It okay. does. <laughs> so, so we're going to do it backwards. So the easiest way to do this backwards is on this light table. Yeah, do, absolutely. Daylight Company. Daylight Company. Is their, is their light table. It's oh, great. Isn't it awesome? Nice I really love it because it's not like hard to look at when I'm doing stuff. Sometimes those light yeah. tables are kind of easy on the camera too. Honestly. Yeah. Sometimes they're in the camera out. Yeah. Sometimes they're obnoxious. So yeah, this is really nice. So, so basically we just put this upside down mm -hmm. so that I can see mm -hmm. what we want to trace out. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to put this on it over the top yeah. and trace around it. So the beard on this, we're going to do this flip flop a bunch of times, guys. Yeah. So the, the beard on this. Yeah. I drew a double layered beard so you could get a little bit of an accent going on here, mm -hmm. like an upper beard and a lower beard. Like a little shadow beard. sort little of thing. Shadow. Yeah. You can explore some texture and all of that. This is overly fussy for something um, as dense as cuddle. It is, so we're but gonna it, it eliminate kinda, that top line. We're definitely eliminating yeah, the top, top line. line. We're just making the bigger bottom beard. Right, so it's still cut out the same shape, mm -hmm. but it's cut out yeah. one layer instead of two. Yeah. Cause yeah, that would be overly oh. fussy. Yeah. Maybe if you're gonna do it just both in cuddle, you could do that, but really the Lux cuddle or the faux fur cuts. Yeah. That's I really what you wanna do cause it's way cute. I don't even way know cute. that you get the benefit of doing the under the under in a cotton and the on the top in a cuddle. I don't. I yeah. I I think you'd be wasting time and right. labor. Yeah. And so, not actually enjoying benefit from it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So we're gonna trace this out on the SF one hundred one. So this is Palin SF one hundred one, and like Sam said, Got it's woven side interfacing. Down. Gritty side is over here. Mm -hmm. This is the smooth side. So it's actually just a woven cotton, mm -hmm. which is great. So it really stabilizes the fabric and makes it work mm -hmm. more like a cotton. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna trace around this, and we're gonna do the outside shape. So I will tell you, we're going to iron this onto the fabric. So what you don't want to use is one of these guys. Yeah, you don't want to. Or one of these guys. You don't guys, want to do okay? anything that irons off. Nothing with the friction markers, please. I have a tendency to go at, at it with a, just a plain old ballpoint. <laughs> so pen. these are like a big yeah. zero. Okay, like yeah. don't do that. I have done it. That's how I know. I've traced it out right. and then gone and ironed it, and then it's gone. We all. It's just have. gone. Okay, so I'm going to try to stick this on here. So I'm kind of conserving. And then I'm just going to trace around this outside line, basically where it's at. And if I'm a little bit off, it really doesn't matter. And you can afford to be like on the outside of the outside line. Yep. Uh, especially if you don't feel that you have the steadiest of hands cutting. Uh, just feel free to cut large. Just yep. cut around the outer part. Yep. So the other thing that you can do is you can... Um, 
if you cut with the Sharpie, is just cut outside the line, or you draw with the Sharpie, you can cut outside mm -hmm. the line. Where does that one go over there? There we go. Yeah, it's a little dense right in there. Because mm -hmm, the I didn't yeah. cut off my side. Yes. And for those of you, if you're not playing with Cuddle, and you own one of the um, the electronic cutters, mm -hmm. uh, all oh, of the patterns provide right. the SVG files oh. for you to use the electronic cutters. For like it, a scan and cut. Scan and right? cut or, or the cricket. cricket. Yeah, those, right. yeah, um, all, all of those um, automated cutting widgets that I have yet to try. Got it. Okay, so and that's going to go prepared there. for them. Yes, actually. <laughs> no, and here's the thing. Um, and again, it behooves you to ask as a customer. Um, do you need a bigger piece? Of I am going to get a bigger. I've got one. Do you have one? Yeah. Okay, because I, I have a bolt. I've got. Um, some. A customer wrote in and and explained to me that fussy cutting some of these really tiny pieces was sort of out of the skill set of her older hands now. Yes. And she yes. said, "Have you have you done SVG files?" And and I wrote her back and I said, "I actually hadn't considered it, but." Uh, let me put that on the list of things to consider. Um, as it happens, uh, my virtual assistant and uh, right-hand woman helper, Erin, owns one of those cutters. And oh. she was like, yeah, let's do this. That's a so great idea. She helped me figure out what needed to be provided. She tested them all. We actually got back to that customer and said, hey, we figured it out. Mm -hmm. um, and the customer was so excited that we had actually responded to something. Yes. Yeah. Um, and That's we can't great. respond to everything, guys. You but can't we do, do everything. But yeah, when we those sort best. of things, especially because something like this, it is, it's very fidgety, which if you have yeah. your fine motor skills are starting to go, yeah. this is a great you know, way to do it. You don't bend like they used to? Huh? Yep. Does cuddle work well with the cricket? So I know that people have used it. I have never. So I really have no personal opinion on it whatsoever. I have heard people use it and I have heard people complain about using it. Some people successfully, some not so much. So I wouldn't do anything thick with it if at all. If you had ever. success cutting cuddle on a cricket, tell us. No. Speak up. And let <laughs> us know what were the trips and techniques that, that contributed to that success. Uh, because, you know, it might be that you had to back it in a certain way. Right. Where are the where are the files? Those files at? Uh, they're actually in a link in the pattern, okay. a passworded link in the pattern that downloads from my website. And uh, so if you buy the pattern, to, they can get it. Yeah, if you buy the there pattern, you, you can get it. And if you didn't buy the pattern, you can't find that link. <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret link. No sharing. Me. Yeah, no sharing, guys. Okay, so this one I'm actually lining. I'm outlining it in black, and the reason I chose to do that is because I want the edge to kind of be hidden because it's going to be next to blue. So I want to make, I'm going to cut right at the edge of this so that the edge of my uh, fusible is black next to the dark blue rather than the white next to the dark blue. It's kind of a weird little thing, but I do it a lot. It's, when a, hack. I, it's a hack. Um, okay. Oh, and in all of these things, when you're using regular fusible, you do this tracing onto the fusible material. You glue it down onto the fabric before you do the fine cutting. Yes. Like you do this broad chunk it out cutting rough cut rough cut it's a rough um, cut. and it looks like we're doing that with cuddle as well and yep. then we do the fine cutting once all the glue's in place yep exactly and that will help everything so sam has never done this with cuddle before what? so i'm pretty excited because we're going to make her iron it on and we're going to talk oh, that through no. <laughs> okay, you'll be all right the other side of the table so head on over get, get my she's got the iron on, on. here we go okay so i'm gonna get my put scraps lovely put to kit. the side i'm not allowed to win this kid am i you're not. I'm sorry. Okay. And we're not going to give you time to go share the video. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, we've Lion got. went to sleep. So we'll wake it back up. So we've got the Aliso and it is set at. It says set synthetic. synthetic dot. Okay. So it's set as synthetic, which is what Are it should sure? be. So it should always be like a medium setting. So a lot of people think you can't iron cuddle. You totally can. Okay. You just want to make sure that it's not too hot and that you always iron from the back side of it. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Dry iron as well, right? It's a dry right? iron. Okay. Exactly. And we'll use the, the pressing sheet we'll actually use at the end when we're kind of pressing the front to All make right. sure everything is there. Maybe. So that's what I use that for. But we're going to start with the Cuddle 3 because it's easier and less scary. Okay. I'm all for less scary. I'm all for less scary too. Ooh, that's <laughs> yummy. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to figure out which way the nap is going. And I know it's going to run parallel to the raw edge so here's okay. my selvage okay. okay and i want it to run that way so i'm going to pet it and pet it 
this is the way the nap goes. So I want the hat to go on that way. Does that make sense? Got it. Yeah. So okay. if you stroke down the hat, the nap's going to feel right. Exactly. And so we then, already had that going on our um, on the tomato, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Exactly. So I'm going to have get, take that. Okay. You could take that over and lay it down, and that's what you're going to iron it on. Oh, right on. Okay. Right on. So we're just going to lay it out nice and flat and get it on there. Make sure it's going basically the same the same direction. If you want to, if you're struggling with it or you're cutting out all of your pieces, like the pin cushion was hard to tell which was up and which was down. You're just going to press and hold it there for count to five. Don't okay. move it. Don't move it. One. <laughs> so you hold it down, count to five, then move it. Pick it up, move it. Yeah. Count to five. Okay. So when I was doing the, the pin cushion is actually like, almost looks like it can be either way. So when you're putting it down, it's hard to tell. So I drew a little arrow on my SF-101 to tell me which way the nap was supposed to go. So then when I put it down, it was easier to just like plop things down the right way. What's the benefit of the pressing and holding versus the, the swooping? Because if you swoop, you're likely to stretch one thing or the other. Oh. So you're likely to move the SF-101 or stretch okay. the fabric and then it doesn't go down in the right place. So what we're trying to do is to melt the glue and then press it down so that it spreads out and adheres. So there's a couple of things that are important about using like the SF-101 is just to melt it, press it out, not spread it, okay? And then to let it cool before we actually cut it. And that will help everything adhere. If it doesn't adhere very well, you can go back and do it again. When we were doing the, um, the stay tape last week, they had to kind of heat up the iron a little bit more to get it to stick. So the other thing you can do is just spray baste interfacing to the back of it. Does it feel like it's sticking? Okay. I, yep, I want to interrupt goes. something. When I first met Teresa, getting. I thought all irons were the same. And then, <laughs> and, then, and then I met Robo Iron over here. And, we saw Robo and I'm like, what is going on with that? So when she stops moving, it goes uh, it's so good. So you never put it on its on its booty. You never put it on its booty. And it just lifts up. When, and then when you want to do it again, you touch it. and it When you touch the handle, it's the, the sensitive part is underneath the handle here. It sits. Mm -hmm. You let go and it stands. Uh, yeah. It's and, amazing, right? And let me just tell you, Smarter when I was writing Quilt Talk, mm -hmm. um, Elisa kindly sponsored me with an iron. Uh -huh. And um, it saved me. I was doing because it's a foundation paper piece alpha, right. alphabet. Right. I was blowing up my arm with oh. so much ironing and and hauling the and iron the lifting. up. Mm -hmm. um, that having this iron absolutely saved me. Yeah, absolutely I I, I really me. I love mine. I've had it for a few years now, and yeah, yeah it's I, great. I've gone through a couple. Yeah. A fancy Cadillac of iron, in my opinion. It really is, but it it's is. so worth it. It's it just lovely. Great. So if you have, if you have, um, especially wrist issues, because the lifting it up is really hard, then this is yeah. a this is a great thing because, and it has yeah. weight. So it just pushing weight. on it a little bit, yeah. like you have extra weight yeah. on it, and then it will just, never burn because it yeah. just lifts up. Yeah. Great. Um, and one of the, the other things is you don't necessarily have to pick it up to put it over. Right. You just slide you it. slide it and let go. <laughs> that is my favorite. Slide it and let go. Okay. So I'm going to take that back from you. I think it's just about ready. Okay. But so it still felt a little lifty, but I think, I think we're, uh, oh no. We're, I think it's good. I think we're good. I think it's good. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing with this one. This one, I don't want you to press quite as hard because it's got the, so much fluff. Okay. But we're going to, we'll press on it still a little bit. See how it works. Okay. This one. The nap is kind of almost indecipherable. I think it goes that way, and I don't know if we have quite enough room to do it that way. Oh, it looks oh, like yeah, we, we do. do. All right. So Squirt. I'm going to let you press that one on and see how that works. Okay? I and I'm like going to cut when we this just guy out. Get in there. Just barely fits. All right. Hey, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this behind you. That's all right. I got it. I'm going to move that. And you can press that count to five, move it again. And we'll see how the front does. Okay. Looks like it's doing fine, huh? And, you know, it, fe it feels glued enough. Good. Which is what we're after. Because right? we're really just getting to the point where it's okay. like stuck down well enough. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and use my rotary cutter because it's easy until I get to the hard parts. That's my, my MO. Oh, wow. You're doing that with the big blade. Yeah. I would suggest if you have a small blade that it's probably easier, but you know, I'm willing. Wait, we're in Sam's studio. She has a small blade, I'm sure. 
<laughs> there we go. So we got a little guy here. Let's see if that one. That's the 28. Just makes the curves just a little bit better. However, the the available part of the blade isn't quite as deep as it is right on the 45. So if you've got super thick things to go through, that might not be as lovely as you want it to be. Right. Because what she's talking about, and this is totally true, is the amount of space between the blade and here yeah. is smaller on this one than it is on here. Yeah. The same with the 60. The 60 gets even bigger. You, 60 have more, gets even bigger. you have more blade space here, which is great when going through thick layers. So this one, you wouldn't want to do more than one layer. And if you want for comparison, there's a 60. Here we go. Uh, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. All the varieties. Got to have all the tools. It's true. I have them. They're just tucked away into boxes. <laughs> well, that's why you come to my studio, because I have the stuffs. Exactly. Oh, speaking of studios and stuffs, not only do you have the stuffs, you can actually find the stuffs. Oh, yeah. You want to talk about am I mm. jumping the gun on this conversation? No, go no. for it, because, yeah. How nicely organized this space is. It's yeah. not a huge studio. No, no it's... Um, I do know the measurements somewhere in the back of my head. I want to say it's it's about 10 by 12, uh, give or take. It's about the size of an average second bedroom. Yeah. Um, it's a bonus room in this particular house. Uh, you've seen the door behind our uh, quilt coats. That actually leads to my garage. And uh, if Hawk turned around, you can, you can see. Am I going to do this? You, Am I going to slow pan the whole thing? Okay. Slow pan it. Let's slow pan it. Um, so, you know, here's me with a, you know, five and a half foot wingspan. So it, it's, it's not a huge room in here. Um, and then if you go that way, that is my entryway. Um, and then that goes up the stairs into the rest of the house. This is considered a bonus room in here. And I, I think it's super important to show our studios. And the mm -hmm. reason for that is uh, most of us don't have that uh, 20 by 20 light dappled, rainbow coordinated yeah. threads on racks studio that they put in all the glossy magazines i definitely don't no okay no yeah. i have a dinette table uh, exactly. yeah. <laughs> or a picnic bench <laughs> yeah and most of us start our quilting career on the dining room table yes right? you know for forcing forcing it all to one side when it's time to eat maybe or we mm -hmm. you know devolve to dinner trays or forcing the family to eat in the living room yeah you know, whatever yeah works. yeah it happened in my family i, I took over the spaces uh, so I really love organizing studios. Uh, for those of you who belong to guilds, the guilds that are looking for virtual lectures, I actually do a lecture about how I organize the studio. And nothing in here is terribly special. It's all uh, inexpensive stuff from Ikea. It's just well organized. It's all uh, stuff that I've thrifted or repurposed or creatively purposed. All right. And, so oh, you want, you want to see the yeah, fabric? Yeah, there yeah. we go. Look at that. We're so, little, yeah, fabric little, drawers. It's fabulous. Yeah, one of the, the, the things about the fabric shop. drawers is I have a rule that if it doesn't fit in these drawers, I don't get to keep it. So, I do big D sashes pretty often. So, if you want to know when those happen, guys, you got to join the newsletter list because that's the only place I blab about the good stuff. Um, <laughs> and so, our phone calls. And yeah. our phone calls. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's that's actually where we share all the dirt. That's right. So, I'm just cutting this out. So, th this is the Lux Cuddle one that she fused onto the back. Oh, and are you so using I'm those just, like really rad toothy scissors? These are toothy scissors. Oh, so they are micro serrated. So okay. So what I do is I try to come down and then come back up. And then up. come back up. It's always easier that. to go into the points than pivot into them, right? Yeah. So I went yeah. down. So I'm going to come back up here. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to take this curve down here, bring it down to that point, and then come back up to the, the inside point because it's just too hard to get up in there. Okay, and again, just... I know that we willingly buy fabric and then we get stingy about replacing our blades. Um, but buy new rotary blades, yes. replace your scissors, and replace your seam rippers. Yes, they, they all wear dull. out. They all and dull. they all get either frustrating or dangerous when they get wrong. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So these, she was saying the toothy scissors. So these are the micro serrated scissors. These are mine from Famore. She has some. Are these micro serrated too? Yes, they are. And these are so these are an, an Ulfa product, one, yeah. which I have in my uh, packed away from I my like studio. Them. I cut so all I my cotton gnomes out with these guys, and then, then yeah, little Karen K. And my Karen K. Buckley. Oh, Karen K. Buckley's are really, are, really lovely. Honestly, they're, Ooh, these they're are really super nice. easy to get a hold of. Honestly, those are yeah. probably the most commonly available mm -hmm. at the clothes yes. shops that we've been to. So yep. that's a that's a good thing. And also, they have these. Awesome squishy handles. Mm -hmm. Which Comfy I really handles. like. Exactly. So there, I've cut it all yeah. oh, out. Oh, that's great. We're going to pull it out. 
There is the beard. It's a little nutty. So Sam, can you iron that back down? Because oh. that came out just a little bit. Okay. So we're going to try to uh, iron that back down. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out here if you want to check this out, Hawk. So one of the things when I'm cutting it, I've got extra bits here. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull those out. Okay. So you're going to end up with little bits. And as we're going, we're going to push those back so we can see the edge and get a nice, crazy, fluffy beard. How fun is that? Okay. So the other beards that we have were made with... Um, with some other stuff. So let me see what this one was. So this one looks like it's a hide. Naomi can tell us. She's still there. So this looks like it's probably a hide fabric. Mm -hmm. This just cut out that way. This one is actually with like, I think one of the fun fur cuts because it's oh. extra. <laughs> oh, and, then, and which, I think seal would be a good. I think seal would be a good one too. For and then let me show you. Look. This one I think is uh, a rose cuddle. Oh, what a oh, sweet, you see, he's super cute little, little swirly oh, bit. Oh, yeah, swirly the swirly bits. bits. Yeah. So it kind of goes with, you know, roses, love, mm -hmm. hearts. So flowers. any of these work really well. So you can see we've used, we're going to use four mm -hmm. different kinds for the beards. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be one kind of cuddle. It doesn't have to just mm -hmm. be like the fur, fun fur cut. So if you can't find those, you're mm -hmm. okay. You're Do okay. something else. Okay, get creative. And we've got a super, super long uh, beard on Boo. I mean, yeah, he, I think he's all windswept. Yeah, <laughs> yes, no, I like, I like that. <laughs> right. Yeah, that might be the fun of her cuts and this might be something different. Yeah, yeah we'll see what Namo says. Cause yeah, you can see Look at that. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> He's pretty great. <laughs> so use what you have or what you can find. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we've got that ironed on. And since it's still yeah. hanging, it's not likely to be washed. So exactly. Getting, using the acrylic faux, the faux, faux fur fun cuts isn't a necessarily yeah. a deal breaker yeah. here. Totally fine to use the okay, fur good. cuts. Um, you can find them at quite a few different little uh, quilt shops will have those fur cuts and they just come on a piece and I can't remember how big the piece is, but it's just a small piece that will totally work to make a few of these beards. Like you don't have to buy a quarter yard of it because that's the reason that we came out with those fur cuts is because nobody really needs a whole quarter yard or a yard unless you're making something big yeah. or the whole series. If you, you made making, the whole series, making, right, <laughs> then you might need one to. of our stuffies. Okay, so now we need to put this guy together. All right. So how All do right. we do this part of the sticky? So this part is going to be different. So tell me how you would do it on cotton. On cotton, we we would have um, our fusible product on the back and we'd still have a paper layer here. And so we peel that paper layer, which exposes the glue. One of the reasons I like steam seam is this, the glue is then tacky. And what the nice part about it is you can press it down and it adheres temporarily. You can pick it up and you can move it. It's repositionable oh. until you add the heat. Very cool. The other thing is you can do um, position everything, even the layered pieces, mm -hmm. like the accents on the letters, and then iron it down all in one. Got it. Okay, so yes, that works that's really well. That's a really nice reason to be using steam and seam. Got it. That's that that's super cool. Tackiness. Right, the repositionable. And I think that that's yeah. what scares people. That's what I like about the Odif. The yeah. basic spray is it is totally just repositionable. Like yeah. people are like, what if I get in the wrong place? Well, That's all right. We got gotcha. you. It's always sticking to the side. You spray yeah. Out. I mean, it's really obvious right. that a lot of these products were um, developed by people who are also had the same fears. Yes, exactly. Right? So we're developing these products that help us be more successful with less stress. Right. right. That's what we want. So now Absolutely. we're going to get this little beard down oh, and I'm going to just kind of look at, so we have the pattern yeah. that we can compare to. Yeah. So we just kind of look at it, figure out how yeah, it goes. So if you kind right? of side by side it, here's the top of the beard. So we're going to come over here. We could go down just a teeny bit if we wanted cool. to. But again, look, this is your art. You get to do it your way. Yep. And this is only three letters, S-E-W, mm -hmm. whereas like Noel is five letters. Right. So the real estate to get these letters scattered in, yes, they're a little bit bigger than they are in Noel. But you have a bunch of room here. If you decide, well, I really love this hound's tooth that I put in the body and I want to show off a little more of it and I want to get that, you know, beard yeah. up a bit, you can make that movement. Yes, absolutely. You can make and that movement. That's kind of why. So I didn't have, um, I had to make mine 36 and a half because that's what I had of my back end. Yeah. But you could totally make this, you could cut it at 40 inches, you put go this with on fabric. here and then do whatever you want. Yeah, you go with yeah. the fabric. So um, you have some, you, you know, have some leeway. Which would... Uh, again, allow you to explore 
more um, notion objects, right? Add notion objects. Oh, totally. Uh, put in notion objects you of can come your, up with your own, own choice. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd put a little rotary cutter down here. There, that... is, there is a note that this whole thing could actually end up being the center of the quilt. Oh, it could 100%. be. 100%. Yeah. Yep. Oh, is that one open? Yeah. You have the different blades yeah. than I do. Yeah, I have the blades that you have yeah. to close. Teresa has the blades that close for you. Yes. If you are not good at closing blades, you must, must, <laughs> must buy the ones that spring back. Yes. Okay. Everybody, count your fingers. Count, count your toes. fingers. Count your toes. <laughs> Don't lose any. If you take the workshop with Sam, she actually uh, <clears throat> extracts money from you if you leave your blades open too much. <laughs> she says kindly and softly. So like a swear jar. It's a, it's a, it's a blade. It's a blade. Jar. It's a blade yeah. jar. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Actually, I always give it to the food pantry. Oh, that's very nice. All right, so we want to we're going to stick his beard on. So one of the things too, when you're looking at the pattern, is you're kind of able to see what goes on top of what. So you can mm -hmm. see like this was the size of the blue that I cut out, but his beard covers it. So you're not going to cut out just this part, the blue here. You would cut out this whole thing. Cut out the, the whole. same with the pin cushion. You cut out the whole thing. It overlaps this. Mm -hmm. They overlap, but you can see by the color or the patterning which one is on top. Does that make sense? Okay, so I can see this one, then this one, then these two, then this, then this, then that. And also the pattern instructs you when you start laying it out, which order to do it in. Look at so that. So the unders go under and the uppers Isn't go Isn't she upper smart? And... Hey, just she wrote it here. in the pattern. Just like she said, just read the pattern. Just read the pattern. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to put this on and I'm going to spray base this on. Okay. And so I'm going to spray base it and then we're going to stick it on. I'll let you stick it where you want it. Okay. And I'm going to spray base it how I want to. So this is the OD505 spray that I like to use. Mm -hmm. um, this is a new can I just got at Montevilla yesterday. And um, you want to use a fresh can when you can. So don't buy the big cans if you're not going to use a bunch of it because it doesn't store forever. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's good to know. Um, they tend to gum up the nozzles when they're old. They do. So technically, you're supposed to take it and spray it. Spray when it you're out done, to clear the nozzle. Spray it to clear the nozzle. Yeah. So when you're done, if you do a whole bunch of spray basting, then you spray it upside down, and it will clear that out, and then you won't get a gummy nozzle. And you do there that you with go. spray paint too, gang. Yes, exactly. You know, in case one of your night activities is getting out there and spray painting things that shouldn't be spray painted. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> okay. There you go. So, right. that was, so we spray basted the back of it. I got okay. it nice and sticky. All right. And then we're going to stick it down gonna where we want it. it. Gonna you're going to have some sticky fingers when we're done, but it's okay. All right. It washes off. Not the first time. Okay. I'm kind of liking that guy. Okay. All right. So now... I just realized. Oh, yeah, oh. I know, guys. I don't have, I, I apologize for not having a microphone today, but uh, we figured, you know. The, we only have two microphones. The, the two ladies were the important folks. Okay, hold on. I forgot to get white thread out. Let me get white thread. I'll try to speak up. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, so let me get my white thread in. So I did kind of a weird, oh, I don't know where my thread goes. All right, well. Oh. That's not how you're supposed to pull it out. Disappeared in there. Um, so we'll use the dark thread uh, for the blue. So as you know, I don't really switch my thread colors around too much, except for something like this. We're gonna uh, we're gonna stitch on top, and it's gonna show. So if I use the black thread around that beard, it would look terrible. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. we're gonna use white. Yeah. Sometimes those are the white. choices we make. For, you know. Sometimes it's ease, and sometimes it's beauty. Yes, exactly. And this time it's going to be beauty because we want it to look right. So we're going to stitch this down and you have a couple of different options. So you could use a straight stitch, but nobody really wants to. I think I need to get my those scissors sharpened. Ooh. They are just tearing my fabric on the thread right there. Those are my old guys. There are those we go. okay? Perfect. These ones might be those were a perfect. little fresher. I'll put them here so they don't get blue. Okay. So I'm going to thread that, and I am going to leave the dark thread in the bottom because I want dark thread for the back of it because it's mm -hmm. dark blue back there. Okay. Okay? So kind of weird, but it works. So I'm going to clear that out of the way. And then we're going to take this over and sew it. Oops. All right. Let's take the hat because we don't need that yet. So I do these one at a time is what I do. So 
on okay. the cotton, you put the whole thing together. And one then big fusing it. session. Right. Yeah. Okay. So this is totally different is that this builds up a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. And especially because I'm going to intermix the quilting, cotton, and the cuddle. So they're going to kind of go between each other. We're just going to build it this way. So there's a couple of different stitches you can do. So we're going to show. So this one right here is the blanket stitch. And um, Michael's got a banner that we can stick up there that tells you the numbers on what they were. Um, four four Bernina, and a half. So this is 1309. Right. The stitch number is 1309. So can you come up here and show this? Huh? There we go. So it's under. So if you have a Bernina, it's under this section here, which I think is quilting. Um, and then it's this stitch right here is the blanket stitch. I always have a hard time finding it. So I wanted to show you guys. So you knew where it was. And then this is the stitch length that I liked. So I tried around a little bit tried a few different ones out, figured out which one I liked and stuck with that one. So that one's 4.5 wide, 2.5 long. On my baby lock, it's a little bit different. So make sure that you play around whatever your machine is so that you can find the one that works best on your machine and what you like, okay? So that's this stitch right here, the blanket stitch. So on this one, I wanted it to show, so I did the blanket stitch so you could see it. On the feet here, I actually did the zigzag because you can't see it. And we can't. <laughs> yeah, you can't see it, and that's fine. So this one is a zigzag stitch that's three and a half long, three and a half wide. This is the blanket. Again, this is the zigzag. So that's kind of nice as it just hides in there, and you can't see it at all. So if I'm going to be able to see it, I want to take the time to do the blanket stitch. If I'm not going to see it, a zigzag's faster. So guess what I'm doing this time? Zigzag. zigzag. Yeah, because, like, I can't see anything can't here. can't see anything. I can't see what I'm doing. Uh, okay. Okay, <laughs> so right. I'm going to bring this over here and I'm just going to stitch it down along the edge. Okay, so let's yeah. come over here. Help me find that again when we're done. We're going to switch this to a zigzag at three and a half and 3.6 because that's the way that works. All right, so now okay. I'm just going to stitch this. Did you adjust the pressure foot pressure? I did. Up? I did. I lowered the presser foot pressure because that seems to work better with the Bernina. So I lowered it down to 50 instead of 70. And that helps quite a bit. And what's that fun tool that you're using in your right hand? <laughs> this fun tool is my uh, by Annie Stiletto, which is a lovely little tool. That helps me. So I do have this set that it'll pivot. So we'll kind of pivot along here. And I will tell you that there is a bunch here that I'd be like, oh, I don't know where I'm sewing. I'm just going to try to tack it down. There we go. Okay, good enough. What's your general idea for seam allowance? Nothing. Nothing. There's no seam allowance. You're basically trying to get right at the edge. Just trying to, yeah, I'm trying to go right over the edge. So you can see here, there, here's the blue. There's the white. I'm just trying to get that to go right over the edge to make it flat. Okay, because that's what I want it to do is to just hold it down and just kind of move this stuff out of the way a little bit. And we're just going to work our way around this. And will it be perfect? No. Do I care? Not at all. No, will you be able to see fine. it in the Sherpa? No. Right. No. Yeah. So we're just going to get that to tack down. I'm a big fan of being relaxed about things that don't require being uptight about. Yeah, don't be uptight about it. Come on, one more stitch. Oh, dang it. Hold on, I have to hand crank it because it doesn't want to do one for me. Okay, we get these down. We're going to work our way around. So this is totally something that depending on how futzy you want to be, you could be a little futzier, but I'm not going to. We'll just work our way around this. This is the pain in the rear part, right? Is it? Yeah. It's kind of because you have to go back and forth. Yeah, you're going up and up and down the, oh, it's, the, yeah, the yeah. zigzags. The whole thing has to kind of. Yeah change directions mm -hmm. right so i just keep yeah. twisting it is what i'm doing so i'm just twisting 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 so basically what i want to do is get all of these parts nailed down and i'm going to go around his whole beard and come across the top the top doesn't matter so much because it's going to be covered up with his hat right so what is your so i'm going to, I'm going to do this what's your uh technique for the letters because the letters we're not going to get to and i kind of want to talk about those so um. the letters are really shapey yeah they are really shapey um and again going back to me being a just the facts man quilter um i i cut them out and i cut out the accents and place them on top um and because the fusible web is robust you know just glue it down just glue it down 
Right. So you, do you have to do those little accents? No, you don't. Um, for me, I like the additional detail. Um, I like the fact that the accents can give the letters some movement. Mm -hmm. It's also an opportunity for you to come back with a fabric that you've, you've, you've used elsewhere. Oh, and echo that color. right. So right. you're repeating a color or, you, or uh, in the case of... Um, I'm looking at Naomi's love here where the gnome's hat is made out of something a little psychedelic that gives us an opportunity to use all of those pinks and all of those purples in different right. ways. Uh, and I found often that when I tie uh, perhaps the gnome body color or the gnome hat color into the accents of the letter, uh, it stops everything from sort of feeling so um, like color blocky. Right. Oh, that's totally yeah. true. Okay, yeah. so we're just going to flip up these edges a little bit. I can come back later and manipulate that a little bit more. So this is why I use the blue. I don't know if you can see it there on the screen. I can see a little bit of blue right there. Mm -hmm. That's my um, water-soluble pen, which mm -hmm. means I could spritz that with the tiniest bit of water and it will go away. Just take a little washcloth there and rub it off. Mm -hmm. So it's not like if I were using the Sharpie and it just stayed there forever. Oh, so wow. when you I'm doing really things... You stiletto for this product, right? Oh yeah. yeah, isn't it great? To... But look at how like it just flips it, it just... right up. Yeah. Like it just hides all of my Ooh, I'm gonna take that first. Please right do out of here. There we go. I love this tag tag team sewing endeavor. Can it's we pretty see great. the can we see the back of that? I don't know, can we? Oh yeah, there it's fine. Yeah, okay, good. That. That's great. So we that just see pulls all it in. Down the beards, yeah. yeah. And then around the edges. Okay. So this one I used the black thread in the back just to kind of hide it and it will end up uh, mm -hmm. quilting it mm -hmm. as we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what, so I didn't quilt this because we're gonna quilt this all down and it will be totally mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. All right, okay. okay. And now we get to rinse and repeat the hat. Yes, exactly. Okay, so uh, first thing we're gonna do is there's our muslin. I'm gonna spray base that baby. I'm spray base that baby. Okay. I'm gonna let you do the spraying because I tend to spray the room. Got it. It looks to me like you're used to spraying in a very controlled manner. Yes, I am. <laughs> All right. So now this one gets stuck on just above it, right? Yeah. So his little, uh, the little crook of his, his hat, show you this, it's going to come around here. But we're going to stick this on. We're just not going to stitch it all the way. So I'm actually going to leave this one. I'll stitch out part of it. But I'm going to leave it up here so that when we get the W on here that we can crook it around the W. Because it actually oh, goes fun. behind the letter, mm -hmm. which is super fun. So that's order of operations. That's order of operations. Mm -hmm. And that's really how you're, you're figuring it out as you go. So here's yep. the other one. Plan ahead. So see, this yep, is for absolutely. the snow. And it so, comes around. Yeah. So when you're approaching this, um, it's good to have your W sorted so that mm -hmm. you can just hook it in there. Right. Um, and all the gnomes hook their hats on the bottom letter. Right. Right. They all hook their they hats. They all hook their hats. Yes. Yeah. So super cute. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to start stitching that down. Do you want to showcase some of these? That would be great. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna take this. I want to show off so, all the cool stuff that Naomi's been up yeah. to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we're going to come around and oh, show Oh, my these. gosh. We've got gnomes. We've, we've got, got gnomes. gnomes. You want gnomes? we got gnomes. we got gnomes. Okay. Yeah, gnomes <laughs> so I'm going to let you talk about those, and I'm going to sew. Okay? I'll, I'll, I'll. You can pop back I'll and forth. What is it? In a minute. This so. is Kristen's gnome. It is Kristen's gnome. This mm -hmm. is Kristen's gnome. She gave it to me because that is actually the one, if you buy this the kit, the, this is the one that's that the fabric that you would get for it. So those are the fabrics that are actually included in the kit that's available, along with the cuddle beard. So yeah. this and nice little accent fabric right here. Yeah. It's, it's got these little flowers. She yeah, cut, she and look what flowers, she did for the pinheads. And they became right. flower head pins. Because that's yeah, what we yeah. always want to use. She is awesome <laughs> at this. Kristen is the fabric wrangler for Montevilla Sewing. Um, and she has uh, been very much a gnome collaborator. Several of her gnomes appear on the covers of the patterns. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so I've, I've developed a lot of them with her help and with her guidance, because again, we were thinking about you guys and kidding and all of this kind of stuff. So um, we're going to go for details. We've go got some little skates there. This is one of so Naomi's. Cute. Yeah. So Naomi so got this wonderful glitter under her uh, snowflakes. 
and we've got um what is this this is a cuddle that's got a great silver oh, speckle in it yeah that's sparkle, sparkle cuddle Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, it's um, great. It's one of our favorites. And then all of the letters have these great shiny snow caps on them. Uh, so snow is a, kind of a subtle guy. You know, if you're not looking, you might not see the snow caps. You might not see his ice skates. Um, but there's a lot of fun for you to have there. Yes. And again, if you if you're not into the fussy cutting of these snowflakes, number one, you can use one of the SVG cutters. But the other thing is we've got a lot of really gorgeous decorative embellishments and buttons that you could use instead. If, yes. it, if this just uh, isn't your jam. Yes. What okay. is it? Oh, this one here. Oh, this is yeah. a great example. Let me move this one yeah. over so you can we've show that because this is one where she took Amazing bat buttons. buttons on here. Look at this, guys. So we've got these amazing little bat buttons on here. So use buttons to do something fun yeah. with it too. There's a ton of shaped yeah. buttons. Yeah. And it's not getting washed. So like go it's nuts. not getting washed. Go nuts. Exactly. Go nuts. Okay, yeah. I like the shadow under this pumpkin. Yeah, the shadow on the pumpkin. What was the Bob Ross quote? Get crazy. Get, get crazy. crazy. Right? Let's get yeah. Crazy. Let's get, get crazy. crazy. Well, I think it's you know, get crazy, get creative. And and just really honestly, guys, make it your art. I mean, yeah, you're starting off with a pattern that I wrote for you, but I don't want you to make my art. I want you to make your art. Yes. I really want you to make your art. Because what I really want to see is later. So if you're not part of the I Love Cuddle group, you have to yeah. join that group. Yeah. But what I want to yeah. see is everybody's versions of this later. Version, yeah. So please gonna, post them. I love cuddle fabric. I love okay. cuddle fabric. Very, very yeah. Fabric when you're searching for that Facebook group. Yeah. Then I mean, you'll find us. Uh, okay, so find the I Love Cuddle Fabric Facebook group. Yeah, I Love That's Cuddle Fabric saying. Facebook group. So just to point out a couple of things on the Montevilla kit, um, we've got this lovely swirly upper beard. And there are a couple things here. There's a little accent on the nose. There's a little accent on the shoe. There's the little accent on the thread. These are all things you get to keep or not. Okay. Oh right! So okay. you would. So if I didn't want to do this on you the nose, you don't want to do this. You don't have to. Just leave it off. Leave it off. Got it. Oh, I was on mine on the shoe. You can see I didn't do it yeah, on the shoe I was here. Trying to, and I thought I could stitch it on later if I felt like it. <laughs> yeah, and actually, I want to say, <laughs> I I want to say we had one here. Yeah. Um. Take a look at what Naomi did here. She just put those accents in in stitch, not oh, in the like additional little, product. Like a satin stitch. Like a little Either satin machine. stitch in there. Yeah. Kind of what I did with the, mm -hmm. the pin cushion. Yeah, yeah same absolutely. idea. Absolutely. Which totally works. You are allowed to creatively solve any problem you face. And here's Naomi's awesome. So we've got cork for our thread spools. We've got this is so much lovely, fun. lovely thread texture Some right here. Yeah, this is thread. this is wrapped with it. It feels like a bit of a pearl cotton actually, a pearl weight. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a little variegation in there, which is kind of how thread spools look. And the shiny scissors are just golden. They really are. I mean, I know they're right. silver, but they're golden. <laughs> um, so, and the, yeah. the, real, the real needle, a real in needle. Here is awesome. It has like the thread coming out. Yeah. You could do the same thing. She used um, plastic here, I think, for some sort of thing for the pins. But you can absolutely yeah. just stick your pins right you in there. You can stick your pins right in here. Um, I, I have used a doll needle to have a really big needle sticking out here so that you can really see it. Um, and doll needles come about yay long, three or four inches long. Mm -hmm. And there, so you can sew th through a thick body of a doll or, or a stuffy or anything like that. Yep, exactly. Um, so yeah, this is my version. Um, okay, so I'm gonna show what I'm doing oh, here because I've got most of the way around oh, great. with the uh, blanket stitch. So this is what the blanket stitch looks like. I'm gonna do a little bit of the stitching so you can see how it great. gets formed. Okay, so basically, I have a blanket stitch question. Yes. Where do you line up that edge of fabric uh, with your presser foot so that you get, you know, stitched along the edge and then the bite into the fabric. Yeah, because that's always the goal is that the edge, there's a straight stitch that comes down here and then yeah. it goes over here. And really what I do is I find it on here. And for this one, I know I need to see just the tiniest bit of white right Got here. It. Okay. And then I just eyeball that. Yeah. It I really, I do have to watch the needle, which yeah. generally isn't the way you want to sew. You want to be watching where the fabric is heading. Yeah. But this one is a little harder. And especially with the curves, you just want to take your time and just kind of watch where it's going that's all things take yeah time. Take your not, time. this show will absolutely be available on facebook and youtube for you to watch again later and it's going to be yeah 
Yeah, it should be by this afternoon. You should be able to view it. Mm -hmm. So see if you can come in here while I do this stitch down this side, because I think you can see this white a little bit better here. So I'll do this so oh, you guys can cool. see that. I haven't done blanket stitch much, and I always sort of get a, have a moment about where I'm trying to align. And sometimes try out the try out the stitch first. So this is the way the Bernina one does. The baby lock actually goes forward, backward, forward, over, and this one just goes over. Okay. Forward, so forward, so over, forward, 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 yep. Over. Okay. Yeah. See, forward, over, forward, over, forward, over, and okay. the other one does three stitches there. So right. really, you have to check out what your machine does and how it evolves. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stop right here because I need to put the W on here before I get this down. Okay. So this is stuck. I'll just lift it up, put it back down where no, I want it to be. You don't want to stitch yourself into a corner. I don't want to stitch it down so that the W doesn't get to hook because that's the cutest thing. Naomi and Mary are both <laughs> going to do the Gnoel next. Awesome. Oh, cool. Okay, so there we go. He's the original guy. So there's his hat on. So now I'll need to stick a little nose and then I'll just keep working up. Yeah. Okay. So that's how that works. So if you have any questions, or there's there anything that's come up in there, Hawk, that no, we need to answer? We're, I think we're fairly good. So we're doing not, all right. But you're, at this point, you you haven't quilted any of the background. Right, and I'm not going you don't to. Need to because it's yeah. not. You're already over the batting. Bit, exactly. Right? So when mm -hmm. you are quilting, so when you're quilting, you need to you need to quilt it so that it holds the batting together. And all packages of batting will tell you how what close it needs is, to be yeah. quilted. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that can vary between four inches and 10 inches, depending on the mm -hmm. batting itself. So you need to read your package to see what that is. This is close enough that as I do the sew up the top here, all of this is going to be close enough that if I should wash it, the batting <laughs> isn't going to fall apart, yeah. really. And that's why you quilt it at all is for the, well, you quilt it for the look of it, but you really yeah. quilt it so that the batting doesn't fall apart. So yeah. if this is quilted close enough, I don't have to. I could go back in here and if I had a fun stitch yeah, doodle, on my machine, doodle. I could do some things if I yeah. felt like, you know free motioning something I could. Yeah. That's never going to be my thing. But yeah. um, I tried. I gave it a valued effort. All right. Quilt by so, check. yes, exactly. Quilt, Quilt by check. check. Quilt by so, check. Let me show, let me bring these over and we'll show those a little bit closer too. And then we'll go so, so through here, some of the here's other Noel, patterns. which is our, 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 our guy for the next season. Good well, Noel. actually, Noel, we actually can squeeze in <laughs> some uh, Thanksgiving uh, gnome action before we get to Yes. Um, our Christmas gnome action. And here, guys, you can make one of these in an afternoon. Totally. And we're quilters, so we think we can make everything in an afternoon. But this you actually can. You, this you actually can. You actually can. Yeah. And you could, we were talking, like you were saying, you could use this as the inside, like a panel for a quilt. You can yeah. do a few of these. Yeah. I think they'd be really cute next to each other. Yeah. Um, and this is the one that I made a couple of years ago mm -hmm. for uh, Sew Together Tuesday when we did a Christmas uh, episode mm -hmm. and I talked about a bunch of things I gave it to my sister so she has it now and I can yeah. show it to you but I think yeah. I used some of the sparkle cuddle on that mm -hmm. because it's fabulous yeah. um and I think I mostly use the regular cuddle three yeah. so it's a great scrap buster for sure Kazumi Peterson here in Portland was my quilter on this one um the snowflakes so she she's amazing at picking just a lovely uh lovely uh, choice of panto yeah. to so, so augment the, the design. The snowflakes are actually the quilting and not mm -hmm, a pattern not fabric. The fabric. Yeah. Which is super fun. Nice. All right. Yeah. So what else we got? Well, you got some snow. We got some snow. Some snow. I think Naomi's is uh, is just so much better than mine. <laughs> 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 because it's just, she got her shinies a, a lot tighter than, than me. They're she's, really... she's got some access to some shiny stuff that I don't have. She did a really she a did fabulous a really job. Nice job. I love all the, the thing, bits right? of snow. Every mm -hmm. everyone mm -hmm. that the Nomi hooks over the yeah the yep. Nomi hooks over the last letter. It's so cute. So yeah. So this was um a, this is not um an indigo fabric. It's printed to look like an indigo fabric that's been tied around the rice. And you could and do these like, any colors you want. Any colors right? you like. I just like that this kind of sort of looked a bit snowy. Mm -hmm. That's and I exactly always where the, the scrap buster thing. Yep, the yes. polka dotty part on the beard looks yep. like we had a little bit of snow going through here. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's my version. We got a couple Perfect. of versions of love. Oh yeah, have, I've got oh, the got other one ones them. here. Yeah. So here are two versions. I'll show these first. Yeah. So these are two color combinations that were just done with the cotton. Yeah. And then this is the one that's done with the cuddle. And this is the one that's done with the cuddle. So and yeah, these are cute. shiny vinyls. These are mm -hmm. really fun. Um, and there are again two variations. We've got the single heart. We've got the doubled heart, heart with an inner heart. And mm -hmm. also in this pattern, I gave you some. 
uh, cheesy little be mine, love you <laughs> hugs that you can just draw into simple hearts if you prefer. And you just trace those off um, from the pattern. Very cool. So I wanted okay. to show you really quick some differences in the ones that she did here mm, with yeah. the lettering. Okay. Yeah. Cause I think the lettering is, was the part that, um, uh, I don't want to say caused me to stumble, but it did cause me to pause just a second. Yeah. I was like, oh, this might be a lot in cuddle, but it actually wasn't too bad. No, she this did one, she did, this one is cuddle and cuddle. So this is cuddle three solid for the back Gosh, the and a digital cuddle. for the front. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, these are the, the letters are all cuddle on this one. On this one, she did a cotton back mm -hmm. and the accent is in the sparkle cuddle. Mm -hmm which is super cute. And oh, then I love this that she one, the turquoise. Mm -hmm. And then this one is the opposite where she did the cuddle for the background and then the top is cotton. Okay, so all of those options are available. Mm -hmm. You could do it all in cotton too. Mm -hmm. You can see how that looks. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, the the theme of just do whatever you want to just do. Just do what suits you. Works. All right, yeah. so, so Definitely loves. more love. We got lucky. So I love this we one. were trying to go seasonal here. So if you've got one spot in your house, you can just keep swapping these guys out. Mm -hmm. um, nice. So this, this is your guy from March. And they're all the same size, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look at that rainbow. So cute. Yeah, look at that rainbow. So this is something where you could really start to play with the texture, which I think is fun. Because mm. like the rainbow, to put that in a cotton fabric, mm -hmm. really cute, with mm -hmm. a big green furry hat. And I know amazing. that you could get some really cool buttons here. Oh, yeah. You know, you could get shiny in here for this pot of gold. Mm -hmm. uh, hoppy. Oh, the sparkle or, cuddle multi for the pot for the would pot. be great. Yeah, for the cauldron. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. Hoppy for Easter. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, we, oh, wow. we popped his, we actually gave him some ears. We popped an ear over. He's sitting on a big old egg. Mm -hmm. um, so this is an opportunity to, you know, find a fabric in your stash mm -hmm. that looks like dyed eggs. Yep, this would um, also be an opportunity. There's a few of them here to put do an embroidery thing if you wanted to. Oh, this is a big absolutely. enough spot. It's a big enough spot mm -hmm. to get in there. And you know, some grass. Um, I fun. like the solid ground line. You might not. You might like just the egg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and we put carrots up here. You could change that if you found so some cute. cute buttons or some other embellishments. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so fun. And then uh, there are actually two versions of bloom. If I can find the other one. Okay. Uh, before we get going in here, da, 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 da. It's funny. oh, it's right on the bottom. The there bottom one, of course. Of course, always. <laughs> so <laughs> on Bloom, I drew the pieces for the butterflies, the bees, the ladybirds, and all the flowers down in here. But there's a version of Bloom that says, go get yourself some butterfly fabric or some ladybug fabric or some bee fabric or some floral fabric and just cut them out. Mm -hmm. So you're not cutting all of these petals and parts you're just you're cutting just out the cutting shape of the flower the shapes of the flowers got it and then that that's something that you would you would iron on the fusible on exactly the back, cut around that cut shape. around that shape um right. and as you can see we didn't even uh maria cardenas a really good friend of mine excels at this technique and she always comes over when i'm struggling with this kind of stuff mm -hmm. um we actually used this technique on a block that i helped the social justice sewing academy do a couple years oh, ago okay and Maria came and helped with that because her floral stash absolutely beats mine. <laughs> um, so we didn't even worry about deeply cutting right. this they're detail. Not, they're not super they're fussy. They're just kind of circled out. Mm -hmm. So again, they're fussy -ish. Ish. They're fussy ish. We like yes. the ish. Um, yes. And, you know, we did. <laughs> oh, the little bees and the ladybugs. The, like this is a bee and that is a ladybug. She scattered them where she felt fit. Right. Right. Yep. That is super So cute. there's two versions there of Bloom. And so these little bees, they look like they're just, the lines are drawn on them. Yes, the lines yeah. are drawn. So it's a bee body and two leaves. Um, the ladybug is a full circle and head body with two leaf parts that, that pop over the top. And Great. the dots are hand drawn. So cute. It's just such a fun way to get creative. Yeah. I really love this because they there's so much flexibility in them. Yeah. So then there's we have uh, things, Fallen Thanks. Right? These guys go. are in the same pattern. Uh, so you can use the word fall or you can use the word thanks. Essentially, uh, I think eight different leaf sizes are in the pattern. Cut them out of any fabric you like. Scatter them where you want. Right. That's a really fun fun use of batiks in there, too. Yeah. I really yeah. I did that. one all in batiks. Actually, they're both in batiks. These are classic batiks, the mm -hmm. sort of solid readers. Yep. These are the Hoffman uh, 1895 line. Oh, okay. And these are Hoffman's Me and You batiks. Got the contemporary it. or right. modern batiks. Right. Yeah. That's very cute. I love the way. And his beard is the same. So you can his really just see same. how they, how it yeah. plays differently. Yeah. So this it's is really a sort of modern pattern. 
Um, and this is our, our more classic one. Right. So try to find something a little viney. Right. Oh, so we got a little bit sunny. sunny. We got sunny. He's got his shades because he's cool. He's a little sure. bit pink because he doesn't wear sunscreen. Or he might be related <laughs> to me. I'm British. I'm I'm white until I'm burned. Um, he's a lobster. Yeah. He's a lobster. So he's on a beach ball. We actually very put a ground cute. line in the sky. Yep. We thought that having the sand in the sky this would be very kind of fun. cute. And we thought a kite was just fun. So... Again, when we're talking about tying together color concepts, I had these different tie-dye-ish fabrics. Mm -hmm. So one in his swimsuit and his hat, and another one up in right. the, um, the kite, kite in the, in the sky. Binding. I mm -hmm. repeated this guy in the binding and also in the kite tails. Very cute. You could stitch this line. I did it hand by pen. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, it'd be a great way to, you could do hand embroidery or stitching you could do it hand with embroidery. machine or whatever. Um, yep. And just to let you know, as a pattern designer, the fastest solution that I can photograph is usually the, the good one. Right. Because <laughs> uh, I'm never I'm never on deadline. I'm always like hugging it. Right. <laughs> and then we've got Kaboom, which can be interpreted either as New Year or Fourth of July. That's so or fun. any other right. fireworks holiday Absolutely. that you want. Yeah, So totally. we've got a night sky on this guy. He's still wearing his Christmas hat. He's probably still got his Christmas hangover going yeah. on. Great question. Is <laughs> yeah. there an alphabet pattern that you can just make your own? That has been suggested. <laughs> as yet, yet, there is not one. <laughs> there, as yet, there is not one. If you bought all of the patterns, you might have most of the letters. You might have most of the letters. You might have most of the letters. Oh, that's mean. That's mean, yeah. <laughs> it is. But, you know, that is that, you know, we'll definitely put that one in the idea vault. Yeah. Okay. And this is this is Noel playing it straight, um, which I added to the Good Noel pattern because I thought Good Noel was funny, but I realized some people might not. Right. Right. Some people it definitely yeah, it, it it goes it, over the word, some people's The word heads. play wouldn't yeah. be comfortable in their right. world, and right. that's fine. So um, I actually made it with a slightly shorter pattern and rescaled it, and we I think we took out a star and and all of that kind of. And that's all in the pattern. If I can jam more value into a pattern and give you two options or something like that, mm -hmm. I do my best. Yeah. I do yeah. my best. Well, and I think that it's great because these patterns in particular are so easy to mm -hmm. manipulate for yourself yeah. and to use the stuff that you yeah. have, the one, what yeah. you want to do. Like you said, if you want to spell it a little bit funky or yeah. you want to, exactly. you know, go, yeah, play yeah. it straight. Play it straight. Well. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. You can do it. Um, these are great. So I'm really happy with these. Let me show you where this ended up at. Okay, cool. Okay. Let's get these guys out of the way. Okay. Let's see if we can lift those up and over. It's a, it's a weightlifting thing with that. Mm -hmm. I tell you, they got heavy. Um, <laughs> so this is where I'm at with mine. I'm going to have to lint roll that baby when we're done. Okay, here's the here's the cute little little beard. She's coming with a lint roller. Yay. And then I'm going to make a little nose and stick him on here. So if you're part of the I Love Cuddle group, you'll end up seeing um, this guy when he's finished. And we're just going to keep lint rolling him until yeah, he's, he's done. So I, again, not having used these products, so I got to be gentle actually on the product with the lint roller because no. I don't want to like, take all the nap off. No, you won't take the nap off. Okay. No. no. The only time it's going to shed is where you cut it. Yep. Okay. So that's that's what we call the initial shed is when it cuts, we cut okay. all the little fibers and it falls off. All right. But once you've done that and once this is on here, it's not going to go anymore. Like you can see the red is not it's not gonna come off. No, because I sewed no. it last night. I so I did a little roller off and there it was great. Did that's we mention so the, the the um the product uh, code? Do we mention, website. oh, the product code. I don't know that we did. So if you go to um, huntersdesignstudio.com, you can get any of her patterns. 30%? Uh, 30% 30 30 off. off. I love cuddle three zero. Okay. Good through tomorrow night, mm -hmm. Wednesday night. Yep. And those are for the PDF patterns. Those are all PDF patterns. Yep. Uh, the reason why I sell, uh, again, just talking about, you know, life and sustainability. We got to take care of this planet and yep. we got to take care of this industry. Right. Yep. Um, I do PDF only in the retail channel, um, straight to you guys. Um, and the reason for that is I was trying to reduce how much paper I send through the mail. So rather than taking this paper pattern and then coding it in yet more paper and then spending the gasoline to mail it halfway around the world, and then mm -hmm. you're going to take that paper off and chuck it, I decided to go PDF only for the customers. But to protect our stores, 
the stores can still always buy wholesale directly from me and from all the major distributors. And I have found her patterns in lots of quilt shops along yeah. the way. So they are out there and available. Yeah. And like she said, if they don't have them they yet, you can have, always go ask, ask them. your LQS. Yeah. Apply the yeah. pressure. Yeah, they're Apply available the through the distributors. So yeah, they can do totally like your LQS low, know what okay. you want because they'd be really happy to have you as a customer. Do you also have you also have your stickers available on your website? Yes, I do, and I. I think that fun. these are part part of the coupons. They're super fun. Yeah, so we've got we got some sewing stickers. machine stickers for you. Yes. What, this is one the of one, them is this called is the one that's the... on my on my scooter. <laughs> I have this Stick one. them with the pointy end. Stick them with the pointy and end. So a bunch of bunch of stuff on there. Check out yeah. our website. Um, you can use the code. Yeah, it's available for certain things. So just stick it mm -hmm. on there. You'll get a discount yeah. for it for sure. Um, and what else? Join the newsletter there. I, right. Okay. So look, guys, I write when I have something to say. Okay, so I'm not I'm not gonna hammer you three yeah. times a day. Oh, mm, mm, I write not about every morning. twice a month. Oh gosh, no. <laughs> um, there is a welcome sequence that really tells you a lot about me and what I do and why I do it the way I do it, um, which I want to introduce you to me so you know who you're hanging out with. Um, and then after that, I pretty much leave you alone. And I periodically go through stretches of silence because I really don't have anything to say. <laughs> yeah, that's me in my newsletter yeah, too. So, yeah, you know, I, I love communicating with you. But when I when I got something to tell you about, but here's the thing. The newsletter gang are the only people who know about the cool stuff. Yeah. So join you get the sales. Uh, you get you get the download for uh, the D-stashes. We, we, we just did a huge D-stash. We're going to do another huge one in January. Um that's awesome. Uh, yeah. Also, that's where you're going to find out um, about the retreats that I do. Mm -hmm. um, there's a link in that in the web in my website that goes to another website that's mine called the Embroider Journey. We just did two in France yeah, this that year. Was, yeah, I, I would like to have been there. Two groups of eight people to Paris. Yes, yeah, and we fun. hung out and we we hand stitched together and we went and saw stitchy things like the Lady and the Unicorn tapestries. Oh, that's and cool. I have amazing guides helping me out. We got a haberdashery tour of Paris. We got to go places. You don't get to go unless somebody takes you there. That's awesome. Yeah. It was That's really, awesome. really great. Yeah. Very cool. So yeah, yeah. make sure that you sign yeah, up just for her newsletter. Up. Just sign up. They can and find you on Facebook and on Instagram, right? Yeah. I do not have a Facebook group. Okay. But, uh, but your business page the is The business there. page is on there. So I'm on Instagram sporadically. Mm -hmm. um, Instagram <laughs> doesn't do a very good job of letting the people that follow me actually see what I'm up to. Yeah. Or yeah it's, a weird, it's a yeah, weird thing these absolutely. days. Absolutely. So the, uh, the one other thing we want to talk about was this <gasps> quilt behind me. This quilt so behind we have, us. We have a couple of um, charitable things that are happening right now. One mm -hmm. of them is this. This so guy. So Sam is heading up this, this project. Guy. So okay. this is a project. Uh, first of all, this pattern is uh, by Bereen of Happy So Lucky. Mm -hmm. It's called the Tattoo Quilt. Um, it is a phenomenal foundation paper piece pattern. Uh, my group chose it. So for the last, whoo, is our fourth? Every two years, my group creates a quilt. We try to create a quilt that we consider wow enough that you probably wouldn't go after that project by yourself, but with right. the combined power of our group, We'll get it made. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's because with this one, one person or two, or like one person made one or two of these, right? Yeah. Like so, yeah. One person would yeah. make a couple of them. Yeah. So you didn't have to do the whole thing yourself, which Don't is great. Go. So community effort. Community and then what effort. are you doing with it? And so we raffle this quilt instead of a buck a chance or anything like that. It's a pair of underpants for for Raphael House of Portland, which is our local uh, battered women's shelter. Mm -hmm. And I want to let you know that during the pandemic, uh, requests for their services doubled. And even though the pandemic has eased a little bit, and mm -hmm. as you can see, we're not all standing here in our masks. Right. Um, that need of services has not reduced. They have twice as many people as they had three years ago requesting services. They run their own thrift store for clothing. Oftentimes, the women and their families that, ends up in, that end up in the shelter uh, end up with just the clothing on their back. Yeah. And uh, we don't thrift underwear thing. We give everybody new underwear. Yes. They get new panties. Uh, they get new undies. They get new socks. New socks, yeah. And so we make this quilt every two years, and we raffle it for undies to get their stock up for Right, them. and so that raffle is happening this weekend, it's happening right? happening this weekend. So somebody will so. win the quilt, but the best thing about it is that a bunch of people will get the socks and underwear that they need to get yeah. themselves yeah. restarted on a better life, which I think is fabulous. Oh, absolutely. I think it's fabulous. They, and they do a lot. There's a they lot of lot. ways that these com these like community places help a lot. Yeah. And then so it kind of segues into what we do. So as Shannon yeah. Fabrics, we have a nonprofit called Making the World a Softer Place. And every uh, Thanksgiving season, basically, we do a uh, a food drive 
I guess that's what it is. It's a fundraising drive. Um, the food gets bought and distributed to low income people, I think in the Los Angeles area for the most part, right? In the, yes. in the community where Shannon Fabrics is based. And they make a ton of these. And I can't tell you, maybe Michael can tell us how many bags of food they make that you get all of the, the fixings for a Thanksgiving dinner. 1,500 this year. 1,500 oh. so, 1500 Thanksgiving dinners? Yes. yes. And so choose your own protein coupon exactly oh, so you can get wow. so it's a choose your own protein coupon is what he said yeah. if you didn't hear that plus all the fixings that you need to make yourself a good thanksgiving dinner so we do a we do that drive and then we ask for your help in supporting that so it's 40 dollars to pay for a bag of food for a family that's in need and you can take you can participate in that by going to softerplace.org is the website for that and you can get more information about who it helps, how it helps mm -hmm. them, and how you can participate in doing that as well. I think it's mm -hmm. really important that we all kind of yeah. do something to, I don't know, be kind to each other, yeah. love Certainly each other. Back, how do you donate the undies for this? Ah, uh, okay. You so go to I my website. No problem. Right. Huntersdesignstudio.com. In the menu, look for projects. And in projects, you'll see undie fundraiser. So what you got to do is order some undies. Uh, my mailing address is on there. It's my P.O. box. You mail the undies to that P.O. box, and then you hit the button, follow the Google form, and you fill out what you sent to us. That is what will – it's the filling out that form that gets you into the drawing. We're going to be drawing at 5 o'clock Portland time mm -hmm. on, Sunday on Sunday night at Cliff's PDX, which is a, an amazing bar. It's under the Wonder Ballroom if you're Portland. So if you're Portland, come out. If you're we'll Portland, be come out. And I'm making shortbread. I am known for my shortbread. <laughs> I am shortbread Sam. It's true. And uh, shortbread will be there. Cliffs makes the best tots ever in Portland. I can't wait to try them. Um, and Sierra and Josh, who own tots, uh, who own tots, ha, they Cliffs. own the tots. They own Cliffs. <laughs> um, are super big supporters of a lot of really great charitable causes in Portland, including Raphael House. Nice. They already have a great relationship with Raphael House. Raphael House will be there also at five o'clock uh, to take Very away cool. our hall. We're currently at, oh, I'm so excited, 1,500 undies. Nice. We've never had one quite this big before, but we've also never That's gone great. national with it before. It's great. So if you can help out, pitch in a couple pairs of underpants, uh, you have a chance to win this glorious thing. So That's right. <laughs> it's the, the folks in my mini group. Oh, oh, I'm it probably going to miss somebody, but let me just say okay. it is Corey and Brittany and Kristen, who works at Montevilla, and... Marcy mm -hmm. and me and Chris and Aaron wow. and Maria helped out nice. and Sarah has been doing a lot of stuff behind scenes and Nancy Stovall of Just Quilting PDX, uh, who's one of the best quilters we have here in Portland, uh, custom quilted this specifically for us. It's really this lovely. is an example of, of the strength of her work mm -hmm. um, and all of this time and, and products. Oh, Ruby Star gave us the fabric. Very nice. We started to try to give us the fabric. Yeah. yeah. Because and, as beautiful yeah. as this is at a distance, it's, it's really yeah, phenomenal. You really got to see the, the It's details. phenomenal yeah. close up. So really, I think part of it is like, we can all do so much when we work together, which oh I my think gosh. is just really, it's an important thing to remember yeah. is that, you know, we're not in this alone. We're yeah. I made two or three blocks in this quilt and uh, they, they were a project. And, They're really uh, and I would, I would have to say, um, hmm. You know, I was really grateful other people were making them too. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No kidding. That is just beautiful. Yeah. I like I like that one. Moxie. Yep. That's that's the one that I have that I need to make. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm the, the heart. That's I'm the very heart. lovely. All right. So um so make sure you go to huntersdesignstudio.com. You projects. go to the to projects for that. Mm -hmm. Um shannonfabrics.com slash blog for the blog post that we have all the information about this, the tools that we used, the patterns that we used, all of that good uh -huh. stuff is in that information. And then of course you can go to softerplace.org for information on the um the food drive that we're doing um in for feeding the impoverished, which I think is fabulous. And having gotten these meals before, it makes me really happy that we get to do it as a company. Yeah. Then we need the giveaway. So um, oh, yeah, we should have a giveaway. Do you want to give me back the box? About this beginner okay. <laughs> so yeah, we have a couple of winner ideas. So we okay. are Gina F on YouTube and Betty S on Facebook. So Gina F on YouTube and, and Betty, Betty S. S on Facebook. Correct. Is that what I said? Okay, yeah. good. Whew, trying to remember those things is hard. Um, 
Okay, so make sure that you reach out to us. You can get a hold of us through Facebook or you can email us at info at shannonfabrics.com. Send us your mailing address, your phone number, all of that good information, and we will send you a beginner box so that you can start working on some cuddle projects. There are There is a booklet in here that I wrote that has six different patterns in there that will help you get started working with cuddle and like I said, some of the tools to get you started as well. So it's a great beginner project as well as one that you could gift to somebody who is just wanting to learn how to work with this stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I could be your friend. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, <laughs> Sam, is, Sam is volunteering there. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us again. I see if I can find the cover. I can't. I don't know where it's at. The um, Here we go. For the So Gnome project. Oh, no, this is my copy. Here we go. There's the back of it. There's the back of it. <laughs> it's somewhere. No, it's not really helpful. Okay. But thank you for joining us, Sam. I really appreciate it. This thank is super you. fun. Thank you. This has been so, just a blast. It's Thanks, great. Game. So make sure that you check out her website, ours, and then join the I Love Cuddle Fabric group on yeah. Facebook if you are there so I can see what you make because I want to see you get clever. If you are interested in yeah. getting the kit, again, it's available at Montevilla, and I will be there tomorrow and on Wednesday. That's right. Wednesday from 3 to 8 p.m. Is that correct? Yeah, that's okay. right. 3 to so 8 p.m. on my schedule. So come and so come sew with us. us, and we're going to be there just being goofballs and helping out. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, we can help you put together some fabrics for this, too. Uh, and then we'll be back next week. Hawk and I will be in Medford, Oregon. No, not next no, week. Not next Two week. weeks. Next week's Thanksgiving. Yes. We're just getting food prepared. So next, <laughs> next Tuesday, we're off. Okay? There's no show next Tuesday. But the next one, I think it's the 29th, is... We're going to be at Green Sew and Vac in Medford, Oregon. So we're going to head down south. I'm going to hang out here for a little while, see family and friends. And then we'll head south, go to Medford. And there we're going to talk about using your machine to kind of generate your own embroidery pattern. We'll be working on the snowman pillow. So that's going to be super mm. fun. It's going to be totally technique-based again. And I mm. am excited. So you can join us two weeks from now at Medford, uh, if you are in the local area, and if not, you'll find us here, 10 a.m. Pacific time, live on Facebook and YouTube. I think that's it. Are we that's good, hot? Have All a right. happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Happy, happy sewing. sewing.